Congratulations. Thank you. For that. you uh, what's your vision that they just met? You had a very exciting journey. No, no, absolutely. In fact, um, when, I mean, ours is a very strange story because um, the three of us who started this company, we're all you know, people who grew up in India, people who went to colleges here, engineering colleges, all the people who went to the US, studied here, worked in companies, and then we all came back to India. Yes. This was not, uh, this was much before it was fashion. Okay. And the whole purpose was that we felt that India had a fantastic IT services company. We really didn't have a world-class product company uh, coming out of India. And we had done similar things in the US, so we said, why, why can't we out of India? So it's been very fulfilling to to take the vision of creating a product company uh, which is not just good for India but for the world and getting to a stage where uh, as an entrepreneur I think uh, getting company to an IQ is a, is a very important milestone so we feel very proud and it's a big satisfaction to get to this stage but this is again the start of the journey because I think that the opportunity is phenomenal and uh, we look forward to it. So that's the new emerging voice. Oh, absolutely. Okay. And in fact, uh, so in that sense, uh, we actually come. So while we are in the telecom sector, right. uh, our relevance becomes a lot more when data comes into picture. Absolutely. So think about it this way: we are in the business of carrying the bits that get generated either out of voice or data. Sure. So when you are having a voice, the number of bits that are generated are suppose x. Right. But when you are in data, it could be hundred x, thousand x. Million X, right? Okay. And and more. Right. So so the more bits that flow into the network, right. uh, the more equipment of our kind will be needed right. uh, by the uh, by the telecom operators who are sure. customers. So I think in that sense, they, if you see worldwide, everybody needs more data. I mean, anybody who said that I have enough data has been proven wrong. So hopefully, uh, as as uh, time goes by, uh, you know there will be lots of need for data and need for equipment. Sure. The second aspect is the. Uh, Industry also believes that there's a new trend emerging, which is 5G and IoT, yes. and which is machine to machine. But again, machine to machine and IoT is again communication. So communication is now 7 billion humans are generating data. You have a lot more of those machines generating data again, and that again has to go onto the infrastructure that is going to be there. So I think we feel that this is a good part of the industry to be in, and we have very uh, competitive products. So he has recently launched the communication satellite, so it's going to be announced. Yes, so, so think of the so communication satellite is actually going to be a, a complementary uh, aspect of the data revolution in India. So what happens is, if you can, you really want to get optical transmission because that is the only way you can get uh, close to you know as much capacity as you ever need. Uh, but what happens is, you cannot take fiber to any place because you have to actually dig the ground, you have to get the right of way, you have to lay the duct and the pipe, and then you put the electronics which is what you need. You don't do the fiber and the... Uh, the Stuff. So, but many places in the country and in the world will never get covered. So, you can have a satellite which can go and form a, a beam for that particular place. Okay. But satellite will not be able to substitute uh, the, the, the capacity because satellites are very expensive. Uh, and think of it this way: suppose the satellite had a capacity for say one gigabit, right. and you need hundred, uh, you, you can't go and fix the satellite again. Right? Whereas in optical, if you had a capacity of one gig, you just put a little bit more electronics and then you have hundred gigs. So that's right. This is going to be a complementary, uh, and it will only fill very niche pockets of satellite, okay. but the broadband uh, and by and large will be through the optical platform. So, what are your key options? So, we, we, yeah, so we, we offer products, which are, we offer the equipment, uh, which is, uh, looks like a piece of hardware, but there's a lot of software that goes into it. So, these are the products which are used for building high capacity optical backbone, which means, think of this way that from a base station, you have to carry a lot of voice video data traffic. Sure. From your phone, you have some device which has to carry a lot of data. And then it's uh, the data is more like a, the hierarchy of data is like a river. So if you have the ingress in different streams pumping in a lot of water, the next river will become bigger and the next one will be bigger. So you have to go and upgrade all of those. So that is how our business works. So our equipment is the transmission equipment, which is carrying bits from point A to point B. And th so at the edge of the network, we have uh, our equipment of smaller capacity. Okay. At the middle of the network, it is larger, and at the core of the network, it is terabits. We go from few hundred megabits to tens of terabits of capacity of the network equipment. Okay. So that is what we essentially do. And the second aspect, so that's the core part of our business. The second part of our business is how do you get onto the network? So, for example, you get onto a network using a 4G. Uh, or, uh, so we are looking at all the ways a broadband customer can come onto the network. So, so if you are at home, your wireless will never give you enough capacity. You really want a fiber coming to your home ideally because that again gives you 
you know, future-proof scalable capacity. So we have developed a product which is an add-on product to our existing product, which is called Fiber to the Home, which is based on a technology called Zipon. So you can get that to 10 gigabits of capacity at your home. You're not, uh, without, and once you've got the fiber, you can start with 100 megabits and go to 1 gigabit and go to 10 So that's one thing. But many places, again, fiber will not go. So there, we are also investing in a technology called BWA, uh, which is based on the NTE standard, which is the uh, one for mobile. But we are targeting the fixed broadband wireless access, which means a home in a remote place or doesn't, you cannot take fiber, but you can actually take a high speed NTE signal, which can be a very high capacity. So we are looking at broadband access and the optical transfer. Core area. Okay. Of course, all within the telecom and networking. Sure. And what's your growth strategy in your business model? So, growth strategy is so first of all, um, as a product company, the beauty of a product company is that a lot of your costs are really we are in the knowledge business, in the technology business. A lot of our costs are manpower costs. And we are a 610 people company, okay. about 310 are in RD. Sure. Uh, and that's the core strength. So, the one is so our cost in terms of the cost structure is not going to change too much depending on the revenue. It is what I'm investing in R&D today is going to give me results in a year after and so on for the next five, ten years. So, so the more we can grow in the sales, uh, the, the better it is for the business. So, but you need to have a minimum investment in R&D and SGNA, which we had a few years back. And once we cross that minimum threshold, we're starting to see expansion in terms of profitability, EBITDA, etc. So our focus again is very simple. In terms of growth strategy, there's a lot of growth happening in India itself. Absolutely. So India is a very large country. Uh, a lot of the networks in India, while we had a telecom revolution, if I were to say telecom revolution 1.0 in India, it was all around Y. That 2.0 telecom revolution is all going to be around data. And that means the entire network infrastructure has to be overhauled for higher capacity Absolutely. traffic. You know? yes. Because in voice you are carrying 64 kilobits, in data you want 100 of megabits. So in that whole transformation, so India is going to be one of the fastest growing market as per over, uh, uh, which is going to be transforming from a voice based infrastructure to data. And we kind of come into building the data system. So that's what it is. Government of India itself is spending a lot of money because while the private operators would focus on the cities, the rural India is again uncovered. So digital India. So the backbone of digital India is a very ambitious project called BharatNet, where 250,000 villages are going to be connected to the nearest uh, block on optical fiber. So villages which have nothing, no data, suddenly will start having 100 megabits of data. Imagine, Gram Panchayat having 100. So what kind of transformation effect it will have on the economy and the rural economy? And that is what is, again, Government of India spending, and we are participating in that. We are one of the leading suppliers of equipment into that product, and we have done a lot of uh, uh, supplies already. And once that builds up, then from the Tehsil onwards, we'll have so much data coming, and so you have to upgrade the district and the everything else. So that's the one part. And then again, if you see the backbone of smart cities, will again be a fiber optic infrastructure because smart cities will have thousands of video surveillance cameras, you know, traffic signals, IOTs, which will all pump in data. I think there will be a lot of connectivity needed. And so those will be the projects which are government-led, then will be private-led. And this is what will drive the growth in India. And whatever is happening in India is happening in a lot of the emerging markets. Southeast Asia, Africa, Latin America, they have a similar problem like India. So we will see a growth in those markets. And that is where we are focusing internationally in terms of state. We of course sell in all the tier one countries like the US, Japan, but they are the OEM to companies who are you know, partners for a long time who are selling into those markets. So companies like CNI and others. So I think we sell into those. So that's one point. Technology wise, we we'll continue to invest into making sure that we stay relevant in technology. So today, 3G and 4G is the game. 5G is going to come, 5G standard will come by 2020. So we are participating in standardization of 5G, seeing what's going to come out, making sure that the product integration is there. And the unique part of our company is that our products are what we call software-defined hardware. So really the hardware becomes more like the basic platform, but after that everything is programming. But think of it as that's a yes. So as versus many companies made a more hardware-oriented approach where everything was fixed. So the benefit of software is more flexible. You can put new things. Think about your mobile phone. Right. You have apps A, B, C today Absolutely. when you bought your phone. Sure. But a year from today, two years from today, today it's going to be a different set of things. So that's what has revolutionized, if you will, the smartphone versus feature phone. Right. Similarly, in the infrastructure side, similar thing is what our phones. We really are you know, differentiated on software, which is very well. And again, as a country, uh, India has the strength in software and we are leveraging it. Who's your competition? So we compete against all the global players, so all the top 
uh, in, in Bali, I must tell you that India is the world's most competitive market in telecom. Or uh, average cost of service is the lowest in the world. So all global players, every single global player is in India for the last few, 10 years. And we have been competing against them. And despite competing against them in our optical transmission, uh, we are in the top two market share in India, which kind of uh, endorses our competitiveness and technology, because technology is what is the main deciding factor. And after you cross the technology hurdle, then people look at quality and then cost. Right? And we checklist all the boxes before uh, customers. So we have been uh, proudly selected by all the top What's the whole objective of IPO? So the IPO objective, too. yeah. So so one is uh, R&D and technology okay. is where we'll, we continue to invest. So sure. I think we'll uh, have divert the proceeds uh, from the IPO for the R&D investment sure. because we really are a technology company and want to keep the lead. Absolutely. Second thing is we have uh, working capital uh, and short-term debt which we will pay off uh, using the IPO proceeds so that we become a debt-free company. And third, I think uh, in the more general corporate purpose is really, you know, international sales, for example, we would like to go to a lot more countries and sell a lot more, because the products are the same product which works in India, will be working in Africa and working in America. You don't need to change anything. You just have to you know, change software if at all and give different versions of software. So, so the more we sell, uh, the better it is for our business because the rest of the costs are already fixed. So I think we're going to be focusing on uh, sales and marketing internationally. And of course, uh, having a stronger balance sheet, uh, we are kind of also, will give us a different perception in front, front of our international customers. Okay. They would like to see that you have a strict, uh, strong balance sheet and, and especially uh, since we are one of the first tech product companies coming out of India, uh, we are also having to uh, have a branding uh, that uh, we, we have to create uh, for India and for, for ourselves, especially in the larger uh, technology that we And what are the risks involved, if any? No, 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 the business always has <laughs> risk, you know. Uh, so I would say uh, uh, the top of the risk would be really a competition because uh, we always compete against companies which are much larger than ours. Uh, so you know, balance sheets which are, you know, which are in the size. Uh, so, so it's always important that uh, uh, you have to always be you know, wary about a competition. And we have competition both from East uh, as well as West uh, of India. Uh, and it's all global. So I think that's one part. Uh, we have sustained. Uh, Intense competition in India, which is the, uh, the most competitive market, and you know, done well. So I think we as we beat, we can compete, but that's always the risk. Uh, secondly, I would say there's always a little bit of a short-term industry risk because uh, no matter which uh, part of the industry you are in, the, the industry itself is not, not doing very well. There could be challenges, and uh, uh, unfortunately, in India, there's been a lot of uh, stress on the telecom side, but. We are uh, lesser affected by it because all the operators uh, realize and understand that the next investment is going to be in data. Sure. And they have to build higher capacity networks, higher capacity backbones, and that is what comes into us. So our part of the CapEx yeah. will probably be uh, the least affected, uh, if any, it probably may not be affected. They'll invest more, which okay. is what I heard in the, all the analyst calls that uh, all the operators have recently. So they're going to still invest more in optical. Right. Uh, they may invest uh, lesser uh, on an overall basis. So our part of the business is less affected. Okay. So those would be the two risks, and of course, the execution risk. I think uh, uh, we are in the people's business. Uh, you know, our biggest asset is manpower and people. And, uh, I think we have attracted extremely good talent uh, from around the world. Uh, okay. A lot of the people in the Tejas uh, initial team are all people who studied in India, went to the US, Stop came it. back, I'm and they come back, and they have, they have, they've been out with us for a very long period of time. Sure. But naturally, I think we, we live in Bangalore, and uh, I think it's a, it's a technology capital. And there's always a, a manpower uh, in the six months to take. But uh, these are all things which we have seen. Sure. Uh, we have uh, successfully navigated through all of these factors so far. And I think uh, what draws a lot of uh, comfort into the company is, I would say, the quality of my team. Sure. Our management team is really world class. I think people who have accomplished, uh, who have done very well. Uh, and that has uh, allowed us to kind of uh, uh, take these challenges head on and uh, keep going. What's your take on GST? Uh, it's a it's a good thing first of all. I mean, uh, needless to say, it's a good thing for the country. It simplifies everything. Uh, for our sector, uh, it is the telecom equipment. Uh, I think it's mostly neutral. Uh, we haven't done the detailed analysis to make any precise comment, but on the first cut numbers that we've seen, it's mostly neutral. Uh, in our case, one third of our business is anyway export, so yeah, that uh, really doesn't affect much. The domestic part, I think, uh, you know. It, it's, you know, from our, our, our particular sure. sector, it's not, you know, no, no effect to a much extent, but country-wise, it's a good thing. I think it'll just take a little bit of time to settle in, but it's a good thing for the country. Okay, last tips for entrepreneurs in the semi Um First of all, I can tell you a few things. Sure. One, tip. I'll, I'll take a couple, you know. one is that um, uh, 
uh, it's, it's, it's hard to you know uh, build a good company uh, over a long term and finally a good company's profits growth fundamentals etc etc so and, and since it's hard uh, it requires a lot more patience and perseverance uh, we'll always take more time than you think uh, we've been at this for 17 years uh, and we had a lot of experience we have a phenomenal board we have a phenomenal team but it just takes time building deep technology company Absolutely. takes time so i think be patient and be and perceive uh, uh, and you have to continue to perceive what you're doing and and secondly i, I would say is that uh, you know the opportunity for india in product is phenomenal i think we have done a great job as a country in it services i think there's an equivalent opportunity available for product companies from india because the dna of being able to do a lot more r and d or a lot less DNA of a very large home market in India, which, you know, which is going to be one of the largest. So, large home market, fundamental R&D cost advantage, talent availability, and a very vibrant uh, ecosystem. You know, funding is available, money is there. I think entrepreneurs uh, should be thinking more products, uh, more deep technology, uh, more global, starting with India. And I think uh, they do that. I think there's a great opportunity, and uh, we are very excited about. Uh, uh, reaching this milestone, which uh, I'm sure is an uh, aspiration that a entrepreneurs have. But to, this, to me, this is just a starting point of another journey, which is uh, having a platform and then scaling it up to a uh, really good thing. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.